Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. Another mailbag. This is uh, collected since a month or so, and some of them I had to open just to check whether everything was okay. Let's start. Oh, dangerous. This is from Banggood. The SKU number is always the Banggood stuff. And it is a Solar MPT charger. This goes to the bin with the solar chargers because you will see I will get a few more things to do something with solar energy as soon as I get uh, better weather here in Switzerland. Next one. It's a big package here. And it is a GSM GPRS GPS tracker for pets, for cars and so on. An anti-theft of vehicle, heavy equipment, etc. I really don't know exactly what it is and how it works. So let's check. A manual, a charger for the battery, and this seems to be the device. Ah, uh -huh. it has a SIM card holder. So it seems that it really works with GSM. I think this is what I thought it is a module as the A7 chip. I had also once in, in one of my projects where we have a GSM and GPS and I just wanted to know how these guys solve the problem and also how long the battery will last. Here, ah, we, I have two batteries, not only one, I have two batteries. We will have a look at it later on. So now the tracker is outside and it should receive a GSM and a GPS signal. Let's send him an SMS message. Now it, it replied. Begin OK. Because I have no um, authorized number, anybody can call now my tracker and it should report his actual position. Oh, I have to, to dial it up, so I dial it up. And really, this small device sent an SMS and even the actual position is part of this SMS. Quite interesting. So you can put this device on whatever motorcycle or bicycle and if somebody stole it, you can call it and if it still has battery, it will report back where it is. And uh, there is also a small USB connector here. So if your device has a 12 volt battery or something, I assume that this uh, can survive quite a long time. If it's just powered with the battery inside, I don't know how long it will work. But anyway, the device works. It is a real GPS tracker and not only one with, which just uh, uses triangulation of uh, GPRS data or mobile phone data. Next one. Ah, I know what this is. This is something I will use for my 3D printer project. This is a so-called reamer. A reamer is a very sharp uh, tool and it can be used to open holes. So for example, 
usually if you look at these 3D printed holes, they are not absolutely round and usually they are also a little bit smaller than designed. So we basically can now open up. You see here it takes out some material and the hole is now bigger. And you have different diameters here so you can go in till the size of your uh, hole is big enough. And because it, it is 0 to 14 millimeters, which is okay, and because it's so dangerous, you can close it, and it's aluminium. It's, uh, it's, it's quite a good material. Next one, quite a big one. This is also from Banggood, and these are small connectors. They are really tiny. You see here, they come out, come out and they grip to wires like that. Very good. And I use it, for example, for my multimeter. I have them here. But these are now uh, somehow worn out. They wear, wear out after a while. So I will take these away. So, and now my multimeter is again working. They are a little bit smaller than my old ones. And what else do we have here? Here we have different alligator clips. <coughs> so these are the ones I can put in here somehow, I assume like that probably. Oh, they're quite strong. Wow, they're really strong. Lock them with the antenna and then I should be able to mount it some. That's how it works. We can now connect. Mm. No, that does not work well. This does not work here because uh, I have to cut a little bit of this tube here. It's too long, so I have to cut this, um, this tube here and then I can basically connect, connect it with uh, banana plugs. Four different colors. Next one. Uh, I can... I think I know what it is. These are small LoRa chips. RFM 95. Two, th two pieces. Now let's check if we have the 868 versions. Yes, we have the 868 version. Next one. Ah! A Raspberry Pi. This is an interesting device. It is cheaper to buy it in Far East. This is now from Banggood here. Than to buy it here in Europe. Because shipping from Far East to my home is far cheaper than shipping of the usual suspect here in Europe. So this is the new Raspberry Pi 3. And you probably know why I needed a new Raspberry because I used my old Raspberry 2 for my LoRa gateway. And for my next video, which is here, you see here, it's my second Raspberry Pi 2. And this is also a LoRa chip, the one we saw before. And this is even a GPS chip. And this will be one of our next projects. So I have now a new Raspberry Pi. It's a nice, uh, nice packaging here. It's like in a shop for women or so. It's not, not very masculine, but anyway, the device is okay. Who 
cares about safety instruction in such a small device? I mean, it's ridiculous. Next one, and this is already opened. This did not come from Far East. This came from Europe and it's Weller. This is something quite interesting, small thing, and I do not know whether you guess what this is. Look at it. It is a tip of a Weller soldering iron. The soldering station of Weller are very expensive and I read somewhere that most of the know-how is in this part here and this is not so cheap it's about I think I bought it for about forty dollars and you can basically just plug it in and I just need now the electronics and then I have a true Weller quality soldering station. This is one of the projects. I will probably do a 3D printed tip holder here and then just uh, I, I, don't, I have to check if it's 12 volt or 24 volt power source and also here this is uh, there is also the temperature sensor in here and I have to read the temperature sensor create a small PID and uh, maybe I use an action for that and then I should get a nice soldering st station with a true Weller quality. Next one. And it's also from Banggood. What the hell is this? Uh huh. Sun battery and load. So it seems to be another solar charger device. I have here a description, this time not a safety description but a real description. SX01 multifunction solar charge controller instruction manual. And it looks like that in, in, inside. It's a microcontroller and so on. And uh, I really try to do some solar stuff and this is why I bought a selection of different this is a PWM a controller or an MPT controller probably and I just uh, want to see how the different principles work next one these are PoE connectors PoE is power over Ethernet so you see here, they have two Ethernet adapters and here two Ethernet adapters and now here you start and you plug in uh, power to this <coughs> plug here and you connect this to your, this Ethernet uh, connected to your switch or so and then you connect a long Ethernet cable here and on the other side you get this one here, you get the Ethernet again, where you, which you can basically plug into, for example, into your Raspberry Pi here, like that. And you can use this one to power, for example, the Raspberry or something else. Usually you do not go with 5 volts here, but you go probably with 12 volts. And then on this side you connect a, a buck converter that you have a stable um, 5 volt supply for example and you might lose some power over the ethernet here so this is initially planned for my gateway but uh, the guys who watched my LoRa videos know that I did not choose ethernet con an ethernet connection I, con I connect it now with 220 volt and with, um, with, a wi with Wi-Fi so this would have been the second possibility. Next one, another big one. Ah, now the things come I was expecting. So these are different sizes and shapes of solar 
tunnels. Just small ones because for the moment I'm interested in low power stuff because some of my viewers ask me if I could uh, create a video about solar charged sensor nodes. Now I have a, a real small one here. I have no clue how much this will produce in sun here in Switzerland because usually I assume they are rated for Africa or somewhere but Switzerland is not Africa. And uh, another one, so this is th similar size, this is another size and a different size. So I have several sizes and uh, I can then experiment and I hope to find out which one is necessary for example to power a whisper note completely during for example during summertime. I think also that they are not the same technology at least this has a completely different color than this one but the details will follow on the in this video when it's warmer here. Next one these are additional ultrasonic sensors but what I hope and what was advertised is that these are so-called SR04P and they should run from 3.3 volt. The other, the old ultrasonic sensors all worked only from fi with 5 volt. These should work with 3.3 volts and I will check it. To test the new ultrasonic distance sensor I have here a 5 volt an old one, one I had already, and now the new one, the 3.3 volt. And I use now an ESP8266 because this has 3.3 volt, whether this works with the 5 volt versions and with the 3.3 volt version. I loaded a small sketch. So I loaded a small sketch and uh, this shows the distance and now the 5 volt is connected. I just reset it and it shows 0 centimeters. Now I change this one here. Fortunately they have exactly the same pinout and we see it works. There is definitely a difference between the two and I would suggest that you do not buy any more the old ones. They look a little bit different here. You see the difference? Here you have big chips and here you have two small chips. So it's definitely a difference on the layout between the P and the old one. Unfortunately they did not write it down here, so you have to mark it as I did, or you just check every time if it's a small one or a big one. For Arduinos, these are perfect. For ESPs or uh, the newer Arduinos, which only run on 3.3 volt, you need the new ones. Next one. These are two sorts of bridge rectifiers, bigger ones with through hole. And this here is a, an S SMD version. So similar function, just different package and maybe a, a little bit less voltage or amperage. So here I have a normal LED which is connected to plus and minus 5 volt. The LED has a small resistor in series and uh, it works. So if I plug it in to plus and minus it works. If I change polarization, it does not work. So let's assume this is now one of your devices and this device would now be dead because we reverse polarity and most of uh, our devices do not like that. They even hate it and uh, what they do is they are killed if we reverse polarity. Now in the mailbag I got this small device here, a bridge rectifier and uh, I show you now how, how we can solve this problem and protect our devices. 
if we look at this at, at this bridge rectifier then we see it has AC in the middle two pins and plus and minus on left and right and I will connect now plus and minus with our device which is simulated by um, the LED and the AC I connect to the pins which uh, go to power then and now I connect the right, the right polarity the black one is minus and the red one is plus and now I connect it to one of the AC pins and the minus to the other AC pin and we get the right polarity now I reverse polarity and you know what happened before the LED did not work and here it still works so our device would anyway get the right polarity whether I change this polarity here or not so our device now is completely safe against reverse polarity next one these are quite interesting I have no clue if they are useful or not you have an idea what this is can you see it? They are all LEDs and the idea is to connect them to an Arduino. Somehow like that. There is a ground here and I have to find the ground. This seems to be a ground. Hmm. I'm not completely convinced. Maybe I have to cut it here. I think it has to be cut it here. And now the ground is here. So you can indicate the level of the pins. And maybe it's also possible here. Ground, yes. Ground, no. It only works from A8 to A13. It does not work elsewhere. It was more a gadget. I just I saw it somewhere and I thought maybe to, for experimenting it would be a nice thing because usually I have always to to push in some some uh, some LEDs and here I could just plug it in and have two, four, six different LEDs at one place. Maybe it will work, maybe not. We'll see. It was not very expensive. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.